Hi there! An important topic in new space is certainly the discussion of new ideas and new ways to conceive, design and to operate space missions. New space gained its reputation with CubeSats, but CubeSats are certainly not the only way in which new space can grow. In this video I'm going to talk about the growing idea and space system design that is of relevance to new space startups. I will talk about federated satellite systems or FSS in short. Firstly, I will discuss the idea of distributed satellite systems. I will give an overview of distributed systems and show how federated systems contextualize in there. I will then spend a few words to explain how federated satellites are the incarnation of digitalization in satellite systems. I will then discuss in more detail the concept of federated satellite systems. I will outline some of its applications in Earth observation. I will then speak briefly of the technical challenges involved in federated satellite systems and the benefits that one could obtain in federated operations. Let us get started. At the beginning of the space era, let's say its first 30 years, space missions were conceived having a single quote-unquote monolithic spacecraft in orbit, taking measurements or observations. An example of advanced monolithic spacecraft is Envisat, a satellite developed by the European Space Agency and launched in orbit in 2002. Envisat was 25 meters times 7 meters times 10 meters in dimensions and weighed 8,050 kilograms. Envisat carried nine Earth observation instruments measuring properties of all terrestrial environments including land, sea, ice and the atmosphere. Many of the instruments on board were evolutions of payloads that were flown in previous European missions, such as ERS-1 and ERS-2. Envisat was indeed a great European success, but engineers know how challenging it was to reconcile its requirements of all instruments on board. And so it turns out that the space industry soon realized that by flying multiple spacecraft units in coordination, one would be able to unlock new mission capabilities and improve or unlock new opportunities. The fact of having missions only on monolithic platforms imply a limitation on the temporal resolution of the measurements, that is, on how often measurements over a certain portion of the surface of the Earth can be actually taken. The more frequent the observations, the more granular the phenomena that can be observed, obviously. The European Copernicus satellite infrastructure represented the leapfrog evolution in this sense. We now have measurements on a temporal resolution of one to three days worldwide, which allows for creating commercial services in addition to improved earth science. A new leapfrog advancement, though, needs to appear in order to unlock additional potential in the new space industry. Humans live and act faster than the one to three day scale we have today. Human activity works at minute, if not second scale, whereas typical Earth observation missions today, at best, are able to provide data at sub-daily, but yet maybe hourly resolution. Federated operations are one possible way to bring temporal resolution to human scale, so that to enable advanced business analytics and other applications of interest for commercial new space business. In telecommunications, the use of multiple coordinated spacecraft allows for delivering phone and connectivity services from known gestationary orbits, for example, from low Earth orbit. This allows for communications latencies that are comparable or better to the terrestrial based analogs. Telecommunications in particular has been the key driver for the emergence in the 1990s of the first commercial satellite constellations, that is Iridium and Globalstar. Both constellations aimed at delivering telecommunication services, such as satellite telephones, using two different approaches. Iridium designed the constellation making use of a number of gateways operating on the surface of the Earth. On the other hand, Global Star satellites were sophisticated machines making use of inter-satellite links that created one of the first networks in space to date. The first attempts to constellations were not financially successful, unfortunately, as their business cases were invalidated by the rapid advancement of terrestrial telecommunication infrastructure. Also today, in 2020, Constellation seem still to struggle in making it successful into the market. It is very recent news that OneWeb, an ambitious project for a mega constellation with over 700 satellites, filed for bankruptcy under financial pressure driven by the current coronavirus pandemic. So said, other constellation projects continue developing to date. 
we will probably observe consolidation in this market segment into a single dominant operator or an oligopoly of some sorts. Constellation architectures are the most well understood and more studied among distributed satellite systems, but certainly not the only ones. Starting at the end of the 1990s and certainly in the 2000s, other distributed satellite concepts came to existence. I recall among these the so-called formation flying missions, such as GRACE, PRISMA and TANDEMX, and satellite trains such as the NASA A-Train. In 2007, a famous program on fractionated satellites appeared called System F6, sponsored by DARPA, the American Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Unfortunately, no fractionated concept ever made it to the launch pad. In its essence, the idea of fractionated satellites foresaw the distribution of functionalities of a single monolithic satellite into a number of flight units. More recently, in 2013, the concept of Federated Satellite Systems, or FSS, appeared in the scientific literature. So, what are Federated Satellite Systems? Before diving into the details, let us contextualize them in the broader context of the evolution of the industrial economy. One of the most prominent trends we have seen in technology over the last 10 years has certainly been the one of digitalization, and in particular, the emergence of digital platforms. Platforms are infrastructures that allow for sharing resources and digital networks. In doing so, they enable new opportunities for connecting supply and demand. This is pretty much what we have seen in the digital economy. Think of the cases of Uber or Airbnb or food delivery. Platforms generate every year an economy that is worth billions of dollars all over the globe. They have been disrupting entire industry sectors such as automotive, tourism, food, manufacturing, transportation and others. The question comes natural then. Will digital platforms appear in space as well? And if so, will they appear upstream that is on satellites or will they instead appear downstream that is on applications and services based on the use of space data? This is what federated satellite systems really are. FSS are an instance of distributed satellite systems. They allow for the digitalization of space systems and make it easier and cheaper for users to access space services. On the other hand, federated concepts allow satellite operators to improve the utilization efficiency of their space assets and tap effectively into new markets. In essence, it is a win-win in satellite operations that is enabled by new technologies and new creative ways to interoperate space systems with each other. So how are federated satellite systems defined? Let us have a look at this chart to clarify. On the upper left, we have the schematic representation of a monolithic single satellite performing its mission. Let us call it A. Satellite constellations, middle up, are made of a number of satellites all performing the same mission in a typical string of pearls configuration. Satellite formations on the upper right are of similar nature. Two key differences are that they typically employ more complex network, network topologies and engage a smaller number of spacecraft compared to constellations flying in closer proximity with each other. All spacecraft in the formation do, however, engage in the same mission. Fractionated satellites also share the same mission, but they do it in a different way. Each fractionated spacecraft performs different functions that, when taken as a conjunct, fully satisfies the overall mission success criteria. Federated spacecraft operate at the, under a totally different paradigm. These are spacecraft that carry independently their own mission, and they collaborate on an opportunistic basis when certain operational conditions are satisfied. FSS essentially operate using spare capacity or a dock margin capacity that has been embedded from the outset by participating missions. So why and when this technical concept makes sense is subject to integrated technical and financial analysis, obviously. Two sets of conditions must be met. First, the federation must be technically viable. Technical viability is driven by orbital dynamics, spectrum allocation, interference, power availability and other spacecraft constraints. Second, the Federation must deliver benefits to all of its participants. Benefits may come as either operational advantage, hedged to uncertainty in the form of flexible capacity scaling, or other forms of increased utilization efficiency. The economics play a role at least when considering commercial operations, of course. The ones that we looked at so far are key examples of distributed satellite systems, but by no means the only ones that are possible. Check out the journal by Professor Daniel Selva and others, linked in the description to this video, 
for a rigorous description of these and other distributed satellite architecture, with particular emphasis on Earth observation architectures. One important question must be asked though, is there really an opportunity to federate resources in space? And if so, why is that the case? The answer is a resounding yes from a point of view. The reasons are quite clear. There is significant, significant evidence in the literature and in public reports that there is significant unused capacity out there in space. The only way to make use out of it nowadays is through capacity lease programs. There is no way to federate resources at large to create mission capabilities that are new, at least not without investment in R&D in this area. Is the opportunity financially relevant for the new space industry? This seems to be the case, in my opinion. Space News, for example, which is a specialized magazine covering the space industry, reported some time ago that much of the more than one billion US dollar capacity purchased by the American government goes unutilized. To give an idea, lows in utilization have been reported at three to five percent in daily average consumption. It is then clear that there is an opportunity to be exploited out there, pretty much the same opportunity utilized by car sharing platforms on Earth. Cards purchased by individuals sit most of their time sitting in a parking lot. Someone decided at some point it was a good idea to put this unused capacity to shared use. Billions of dollars were made out of the simple idea this way. So why not do the same for spacecraft? This is what in essence federated systems are all about. So we covered a lot of ground in this video. We did an overview of what distributed satellite systems are and why are they relevant to the new space industry. We talked about digitalization in the context of space systems. We introduced the idea of federated satellite systems. We explored applications in Earth observation and telecommunications. And lastly, we talked briefly about the technical challenges and benefits involved. This is by no means an exhaustive coverage of the topic. Much work has been done in the field of FSS by research groups and organizations from all over the world. In the next video, we're going to overview some of the research topics that have been analyzed by the research team that the lead at Skoltech. Thank you very much for your attention. See you in the next video.